Hello, my name is Hyatt Frobos, a current PhD student in swine nutrition at Kansas State University. And today I'm going to be going over my presentation from the Midwest Animal Science meetings in 2015 with my abstract titled Suckling Reduction and Boar Exposure to Induce Estrus in Lactating Sows. But before getting into the details of the study at hand, I'd like to go over a little bit of background on why sows typically experience a period of anestrus during lactation. There are several factors in play, but they include the metabolic status of the sow, as she's typically in a negative energy balance during lactation, the presence of a suckling litter at her side, which causes a negative feedback mechanism to reduce the development of ovarian follicles during lactation, and finally, the absence of a boar and his stimulatory effect within the typical farrowing crate environment. These factors collectively result in the failure of ovarian follicles to develop to preovulatory size. Now, despite these concerns, researchers have investigated methods to induce estrus in lactating sows dating back to the 1950s. But generally, the research has shown that methods used have either been too labor-intense or the sow response is too inconsistent to merit industry-wide adoption. Nevertheless, breeding sows in lactation does have several potential benefits, and those have included historically the ability to reduce or eliminate sow non-productive days, increase the weaning age of the pig, and then contemporary issues also bring in new concepts such as the ability to ease the transition of sows into group gestation housing or shift the breeding duties of workers into the farrowing house which may have an additional benefit in terms of pre-weaning survival. Recent international research conducted in Australia and the Netherlands has also indicated that modern sow genotypes may be able to respond more consistently than we previously thought. Based on this international research at Kansas State, we conducted a pilot study where an altered suckling regimen, denoted as ALT, which was a combination of split weaning and intermittent separation, as well as boar exposure, provided by removing the sow from the farrowing crate, taking her to an outside boar for external boar exposure, had very positive results, including 93% of our ALT sows in estrus during lactation, as well as our ALT sows in estrus approximately one and a half days earlier post farrowing than controls, while having no negative repercussions on subsequent reproductive performance, as well as increased body weight gain in lightweight piglets. And while these were extremely promising results, overall we still had questions around the method used to reduce suckling pressure, as well as the provision of boar exposure, and we wanted to test those, those factors in a follow-up study. So for the objective of the present study, we wanted to compare methods of suckling reduction in order to elicit estrus during late lactation. For the procedures, we had 135 PIC 1050 sows used in five consecutive farrowing groups, farrowing between February and July, and our parity ranged from 1 to 5 in these sows, averaging 2.6, and litter size was standardized within all litters by 48 hours post-farrowing and averaged 11.5 pigs per sow. The day on which most of the litters were born was considered day zero of lactation within a farrowing group, and for this study, based on the treatments which were imposed, all pigs were provided creep feed and supplemental water inside the farrowing crate from day 14 until they were weaned on either day 21 or day 25 based on the treatment structure. Additional procedures, we actually waited until day 18 to allot sows to one of five treatments, a control or four reduced suckling treatments, which were based on parity, farrowing date, and suckled litter size for allotment. Our control sows were weaned at day 21, as would be conventional practice on the K-State swine farm, whereas our four reduced suckling treatments were all weaned at day 25. One of the key differences from this study and the prior study was the fact that daily boar exposure was provided not outside of the farrowing house, but we actually brought the boar into the farrowing room from day 18 until estrus, and that was provided daily uh, using a robotic boar cart where the boar was harnessed to the boar cart and remotely driven in front of the sow's farrowing crate, providing most to nose boar exposure for each sow for approximately five minutes per day. Moving into the treatment structure of our study, our controls again were conventionally weaned on day 21, and then our four reduced suckling treatments will be described in more detail on the following slides. They included an altered suckling treatment, ALT, which identically matched the provision of uh, altered suckling in the previous study, Intermittent separation, denoted as SEP, split weaning, denoted as SW, and 24-hour removal, denoted as 24-hour. To break these treatments down in more detail, the altered suckling treatment, 
At day 18, the heaviest pigs on those sows were split weaned and weaned into the nursery. However, the lightest weight five pigs on each sow were placed in adjacent farrowing crates so that alt sows were neighboring each other, and those five lightweight pigs were combined to form a new lightweight litter of 10 pigs. And that lightweight litter was then rotated between sows at 12 hour intervals so that the piglets could receive 24 hours of nursing, whereas the sow was only suckled for, 10, for 12 hours per day, thereby reducing the suckling pressure. For intermittent separation, or SEP, we again placed these sows in adjacent farrowing crates. However, in this study, we used the common area between the body wall of two sows to create a commingling area where two litters could be combined for 12 hours a day from day 18 to 25, and provided supplemental creep and water, whereas during the remainder of the day they were allowed to suckle at cross litters. So here is a visual representation of how those pigs were housed during that time, using the body wall dividers on either side of the sow with creep feed and water provided, and those pigs were in, placed in this environment from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m., whereas during the time period of the day, for 12 hours, those dividers were simply removed, and the pigs were allowed to cross suckle across two litters. For the split weaning treatment, this may be the most familiar to you in the audience. This was a simpler treatment where we simply weaned the heaviest pigs on day 18, leaving only the five lightest weight pigs on the sow, and they were allowed to continuously suckle their mother for 24 hours per day until weaning at day 25. Then finally, our 24-hour removal treatment, which was a new treatment not previously studied in the literature, but the idea behind this and the hypothesis was that if we removed all of the pigs from each sow for 24 hours, one 24-hour period, we may be able to jumpstart the hormone processes needed to elicit lactational estrus when combined with daily boar exposure. So in this study, in this treatment, we used the same separation area combining two litters for one 24-hour period from day 18 to day 19 of lactation, after which we placed them back on their sow and they were allowed to continuously suckle their mother until day 25. Final procedures to discuss is the fact that we used estrus uh, confirmation with a back pressure test in the presence of a mature boar, and boars were rotated daily to minimize any individual boar effects. Our sows were all bred using post-cervical artificial insemination, once at first observed estrus and then again 24 hours later, and pregnancy was confirmed using transabdominal ultrasound on all sows at day 28 after insemination. For our statistical analysis, the normally distributed data points were analyzed using the mixed procedure of SAS, with sow as the experimental unit and farrowing group included in the model as a random effect, whereas our binomially distributed data, conception and farrowing rates, were evaluated using a chi-square analysis in proc logistic of SAS. And the significance for this study was set at p less than 0.05 for all treatment means, and if significant, pairwise comparisons were then used to evaluate treatment differences. Moving into the results of the study, I'll start with sow performance with our treatment structure along the bar at the top of the, of the chart. Our sows across treatments ranged from 26 to 28 sows, and their average parity again was 2.5 to 2.6. While lactation body weight loss and back fat loss were not different across treatments, cumulative lactation feed intake was higher in SEP, split wean, and 24-hour treatments than, than the controls, which is likely due to the fact that they nursed for an additional four days as compared to control sows weaned on day 21. When we look at the percentage of sows which were in estrus during lactation, I've left a control here for you as a reference point because these controls did receive three days of boar exposure prior to weaning. However, none of those controls were detected in estrus during lactation. Along the vertical axis, we have the percentage of sows mated in lactation, and along the horizontal axis, our treatment structure. And among the four reduced suckling treatments, we had a fairly high rate of sows which expressed estrus during lactation, but there were no significant differences across these reduced suckling treatments, although split wean sows did have the numerically highest response rate. When we look at when these sows were in estrus relative to weaning, our control sows had a significantly longer weaned to estrus interval than our reduced suckling treatments, but it was shorter than typically seen in commercial environments, and this may be influenced by the fact that they did receive boar exposure for three days prior to weaning whereas the four reduced suckling treatments did not differ from each other. When we look at this data in a different way, with the day in estrus reflected post-farrowing, 
you can see that the control sows were in estrus at a similar time compared to the four reduced suckling treatments, again likely influenced by the fact that they were weaned at day 21, whereas the remaining treatments were weaned at day 25. For conception rate, we have the control sows mated post weaning used here as a reference point. These were all mated after they were weaned and they had a, a very high pr uh, pregnancy or conception rate at 97%. Whereas among our four reduced suckling treatments, pigs in the alt or split weaning treatment perform similarly to control of mated post weaning. Whereas sows in the SEP and 24 hour treatments did have a reduced conception rate as compared to controls. When we switch gears and look at the piglet performance, if we look at creep feed use or disappearance from day 14 to wean, due to the differences in litter size and weaning age, I, re I reflected these on a grams per pig per day of creep feed disappearance. And our separation and 24 hour treatment pigs did have a significantly higher rate of creep feed disappearance compared to the other reduced suckling treatments and compared to controls. However, when we look at that reflective of piglet body weight at day 25, when our reduced suckling treatments were weaned, despite having the most creep feed disappearance, set pigs were, the, were light, the lightest among reduced suckling treatments, which may be influenced by the fact that they only nurse for 12 hours a day compared to the other tre treatments which nurse continuously. If we look at split wean and 24 hour treatments, they were significantly heavier than the other treatments at day 25. So to summarize the results of this study, our cumulative lactation feed intake was higher in SEP, split wean, and 24-hour sows, which was likely influenced by a four-day longer lactation in these litters. And of the 106 sows in the four reduced suckling treatments, we were encouraged by the fact that 76% of those expressed estrus during lactation. However, the separation and 24-hour treatments did have a reduced conception rate compared to controls. And then for our piglet performance, while creep feed disappearance was greatest in the SEP and 24-hour litters, which experienced a separation from their mother for all or part of the day, separation did decrease day 25 pig body weight compared to other reduced suckling treatments. And the pigs in the split wean and 24-hour treatments were heavier than controls at day 25, but keep in mind that this might have been influenced by the fact that controls were weaned at day 21 and had already experienced part of their post-weaning growth check. So for the implications of this study, of the four reduced suckling methods used in the present study, split weaning and altered suckling appear to be the most promising for lactational estrus induction. And we were encouraged by the fact that providing nose-to-nose -nose boar contact inside the farrowing room appears to be a sufficient stimulus to elicit lactational estrus. Then finally, intermittent separation appears to increase creep feed disappearance. However, additional work is needed to determine the effects of this separation on piglet performance post-weaning. With that, I appreciate your time and attention during this presentation.